In Ephesians 4, we are warned by the Apostle Paul, the church is warned, that the reason why you're not experiencing God's presence, even though you should be because you have the Holy Spirit in you, it's because, verse 30, you are grieving the Holy Spirit. Paul says to the church, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And how does one do that? How do you grieve the Holy Spirit? He goes on to say in verse 31, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander be put away from you along with all malice. Instead, be kind to one another. Be tender-hearted. Forgive as Christ has forgiven you. So what is it that grieves the Holy Spirit in you? It's your unholiness. It's your unholiness, it's your bitterness, it's your anger, it's your foul mouth, and all those things. And what is the root of what comes out of our mouth? It's our heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when we have all of this stuff coming out of our mouth, this this bitterness and this wrath and this anger and this slander, all of this stuff is coming out of us, it's a heart problem, it's a heart issue within us. If your heart is not right, you will grieve the Holy Spirit. And just like a person is grieved when they experience a loss, have you experienced a loss in your life? Does it make you sad? Does it it cause you to grieve? Yes, it does. The Holy Spirit grieves when you lose your holiness. Think about that. When you lose your holiness, You are grieving the Holy Spirit because He's a person living inside of you. When Christians say, I don't feel God's presence, I want to get closer to God, but I don't know how, how, the solution is always the same. Be holy as God is holy. Get rid of the bitterness and the wrath and the anger and the slander that's coming out of your mouth and be kind and forgive one another. Seek God with a holy life, and you'll find him. Because God didn't really go anywhere, does he? He's been there the whole time. He's in you. If you have the Holy Spirit in you. Asbury University is in Kentucky. It is, has experienced in this month a uh, revival, is what Christians would call it, a revival. Um, in case you haven't um, uh, been aware of what's going on there, or, or you haven't heard about this, I give you kind of this the quick summary. It started with a normal chapel service on February 8th of this year. Um, After the pastor dismissed, there were about a dozen or so students from the university that just stayed to pray. And they stayed and prayed. And then some people came back after they had left to pray. And then they began to sing. And then some more came back. And the next thing you know, the campus... It's just kind of coming and going, and the service never really ended. And it's just going, and it's going. And then, of course, word got out through social media, and then kind of went viral. If you go on YouTube, you'll see that. People came from all over. They came from, um, well, I know people that from St. Clair Shores drove down to experience it. People flew from overseas. Thousands of people came and just really overwhelmed this little town and university. And they finally, after two weeks, moved the service off campus to a different location. I personally have studied revivals over the centuries. Maybe you have too. Maybe you've read about revivals. The most famous is the Great Awakening here in our our country that took place back in 1734. Jonathan Edwards Church um, just started spreading. The Word of God was preached. It was spreading all over Um, the the colonies, and uh, in fact, five years later after it started, uh, a man by the name of George Whitefield uh, uh, started preaching, and it was said that 80% of the colonists heard him preach, and it was like pouring gasoline on a fire that was already blazing. I mean, George Whitefield's preaching just, I mean, God used it in a mighty way. Revival called the Great Awakening. 100 years later after that, 1857, a guy by the name of Jeremy Lamphere began a prayer lunch with six guys in New York City. In one year, they say about a million people were saved. 
A million people came to Christ. That started with one prayer lunch with six guys. Now, as I've studied revivals and I've read about revivals, there seems to be two key ingredients in my mind. The Holy Spirit and God's Word being preached. The Holy Spirit and God's Word. When those two things come together, revival takes place. In fact, John 16, when he comes, the Holy Spirit will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. The Holy Spirit convicts people when God's word is preached. And all who call in the name of the Lord are saved. So what I've understood and what I understand about revival is that when a revival happens, first and foremost, God is saving people, their souls. God is saving souls. That's what revival is first and foremost about. But it's also about holiness. It's also about holiness. You need to understand this if you're a Christian. This has to be so, I mean, this has to be a fundamental truth that you understand as a Christian, that revival always begins within a Christian. It always begins in your heart. When you surrender all of you to all of him, you will experience revival in your own heart. And that's how it starts. That's how it happens. That's, that's, the, that's where it starts. And then it spreads from there. You see, what I think happened in Asbury this month is that these students were revived or were, were, were seeking holiness. And I think that the rest of the world kind of saw this and got excited about it. And many were seeking revival in their own heart as well and seeking holiness. And that's why they were willing to drive for hours, fly for hours to experience it. And I think that their lives will never be the same. I think that they will go and make disciples in a glorious way. In fact, there's a movie that's being played right now in theaters, Jesus Revolution, that's a result of a, of a revival that took place in the 70s. The people that have, have, have made that movie happen today, we had someone saved in the 70s, in case you didn't just hear that. <laughs> But that, that, that movie is, is, is the fruit, if you will, of people that were in the revival of the 70s. So I would love to see the fruit of those people that had revival in Asbury, those students, what they will do, what will happen in their churches that they serve in in the years to come. I can't wait to see that. Because the truth is, the truth is that you don't have to go to Asbury University to experience revival. It begins in your own heart. When you confess your sins, when you repent, turn away from those sins and surrender it all to God, when all you want is holiness more than anything else, you will feel God's presence. You will experience revival. And when revival begins in you, it spreads. It spreads to others. You don't need me or this church to come up with a evangelism plan for you, all right, you become, I mean, you, you spill out evangelism. You can't, when something amazing happens to you, do you not tell everybody you come into contact with? Don't you? Don't you share it with everyone? I mean, just, just imagine having a great meal at an amazing restaurant. Don't you plaster that all over social media? Oh, you got to go to this place. I loved it. It was so good. All right? When the Holy Spirit when you experience revival because you are all in and you surrender it all to God, you will, you will just naturally tell everyone. And so it begins within us. It begins in our hearts. Will we see revival here in St. Clair Shores? I've asked that question many times. And the answer is, it depends on you. It depends on you. It depends on your desire and your heart. It starts with you, and it starts with me. There were a dozen students that heard the pastor dismiss chapel, and they just decided that they had no other place better to be than right there, worshiping God, pouring out their hearts. I have no doubt they confessed their sins, they asked for forgiveness, and they stoked the flame of the Holy Spirit inside of them, and it spread. They admit 
They didn't plan to have a revival. It happened. And it will happen when we surrender it all to God. Because in John 3, 8, Jesus says, the wind blows where it wishes. He's trying to help you understand what the Holy Spirit and how it works. And Jesus says this, the wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of the wind. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Holy Spirit. And it's that simple. We could have a revival here, but it depends on your heart, and it depends on your desire. Will you be holy as God is holy?